We're now only a week away from the first anniversary of Forza Horizon 5, and despite the game's criticisms, there are still plenty of redeeming features. We've already covered the negatives of Forza Horizon 5 in our video last week, so be sure to check that out. But this week, we are celebrating the Horizon Festival coming to Mexico. From the beautiful landscape, to the respected heritage, to the hugely populated car list, there's a lot to celebrate here, so we'd better get cracking. I'm Mark from Racing Games, and here's everything great about Forza Horizon 5. Let's start with the piece de resistance of Forza Horizon 5. Yes, we did say last time that the map was empty when it comes to things to do and NPCs to crash into, but it certainly isn't empty when it comes to beautiful views, stunning scenery and amazing historical locations to visit. It's almost impossible to drive around the map without stopping to admire the environment surrounding you, especially when crossing the Gran Puente Bridge, driving through the jungles around Ek Balam or even skirting the crater of La Gran Volcano. Every inch of the map has the ability to take your breath away, and that's before we even get into just what makes the world of Forza Horizon 5 so special. Whilst the world of Forza Horizon 4 was centred around the city of Edinburgh, Forza Horizon 5 takes place around the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Guanajuato, with its distinctive sandstone buildings, tight streets and its labyrinths of tunnels beneath those tight streets, the city provides a unique racing environment, as well as highlighting a key component of how the game respects the history of Mexico. Along with Guanajuato, the jungle ruins of Ek Balam and the ancient pyramids of Teotihuacan can also be visited, but in order to be able to include these locations within the game, the developers had to agree to protect and preserve these historic locations. Players may have noticed the environments are less destructible once you arrive at each location, with cars now bouncing off walls and scaffold poles no longer collapsing upon impact. This is a deliberate design choice as a mark of respect to the heritage of these monuments. These buildings form a big part of the history of Mexico, so it's great to see them not only present in the game, but also protected from destruction. Let's be honest here, without that protection there would always be one person knocking them down each time they drove past. Each location in the game has also been recreated using photogrammetry data to ensure it is as close to the real thing as possible. This detail goes right down to rock placements on the side of the volcano. Yep, they even scan the rocks. One final point to make on the world of Forza Horizon 5 is the weather. In an age where dynamic weather is in vogue, we must tip our racing helmets to the weather system in Forza Horizon 5. Along with the seasonal changes affecting the climate across the map, the dynamic weather is also localised across each biome. This means you can sit in your car on one side of the map, watching a thunderstorm ravage across the other side. If you love thunderstorms as much as I do, you're probably already vibrating with excitement just at the thought of this. Driving across the map also feels varied because of this. One minute you're driving through dazzling sunshine, before being blinded by pelting rain or even a dense sandstorm, then emerging back into the sunlight once more. Then there's combating the snow around the volcano's peak, or even sliding around the muddy plains after a storm. There really is every type of weather in the game, and this also carries over to races. Be prepared for a wet night race, or a sandstorm to appear during a race across the dunes. Yes, the NPCs are few and far between, and yes, the game could use some more events to fill the map out better, but when it came to the map design itself, the developers really knocked it out of the park in our opinion, and we here at Racing Games love the Mexican world they have created. Alright, that's the world ticked off, let's go talk about cars. So last week we talked about the car list, and how many cars were in fact carried over from previous Forza Horizon games. We still stand by our argument that that's not a good thing, but when you see just how many cars are available in the game, it does start to make sense. At the time of recording, Forza Horizon 5 has over 630 cars, which is still shy of Forza Horizon 4's 700, but considering we still have another DLC coming to Forza Horizon 5, plus a multitude of updates still on the horizon, the game could end up passing its predecessor. Before picking up your pitchforks though, let me just put that into perspective. With 630 cars in your garage, spending just 3 hours in each vehicle will mean you have played the game for over 1,800 hours. That's 75 real days of driving around Mexico. Sure, it's easy to compare vehicle lists from game to game, 
but sometimes you do have to ask yourself just how many vehicles in the game will you end up actually driving. For completionists, it is about getting every car available, no matter if they ever get driven or not. But for the rest of us, we end up sticking to our favourite cars, never even bothering to look at the rest. Plus it's not just the number of cars, but the variety of cars too. Considering the number of racing disciplines in Forza Horizon 5, from street racing to cross country racing and everything in between, the game does a good job of populating your garage with enough cars from each discipline to keep you competitive. This is even before you get busy customising and tuning each vehicle, tailoring it for specific races to ensure you come out on top. For those cars that can compete in multiple race types, don't worry, you can own more than one of each car, meaning you can have a model tuned specifically for street racing with another set up exactly for drag racing. You might need different paint jobs to remember which is which, but that's entirely up to you. Speaking of paint jobs, the aesthetic customization in Forza Horizon 5 is very in-depth too. The livery editor allows you to paint your car pretty much however you want, although just be mindful of the game's profanity filters before hitting confirm. Finally, you can recreate the famous Martini Rally livery for your favourite rally racer, or just deck out your SUVs in the Jurassic Park livery. The choice really is yours. All setups, tunes and liveries can be shared with other players, so if you don't fancy trawling through it all yourself, you can just download a tried and tested setup from someone else to drive you to victory. Just like the monuments around the map, Forza Horizon 5 does a brilliant job of showcasing Mexico's automotive and racing history. The early stages of the game's story introduce the history of the Volkswagen Beetle in Mexico, with you tasked with recovering and restoring a classic Vocho from a barn before taking to the tarmac and pushing it to its limits. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the game teaching you about Mexico's love of motor racing, and we here at Racing Games love the detail and research that the developers have gone to. Oh, and one final point about the cars. Forza Horizon 5 has a mix of cars from all racing eras too, from old classics right up to modern day electric vehicles. In fact, Forza Horizon 5 has a more modern car list than Gran Turismo 7, so score one to Forza in that department. So we've covered the world and the cars that drive in it, now let's talk about the story. Before we move on, have you subscribed to Racing Games yet? Just one click and you're on the Racing Games grid. Oh, and hit that notification bell too so you never miss an upload. Alright, on with the video. A 20 hour long story is something to be cherished in any game these days, let alone a racing game. Forza Horizon 5's story isn't perfect by any means, but that is still a fair amount of content. Not only that, the story is rich in history when it comes to the racing pedigree of Mexico. Long drives to and from events are filled with exposition about the Vochos, dune buggies and even performance vehicles the country has either adopted or produced over the years. There's also the representation of the Mexican street racing scene with El Jefe. Mexican wrestling, where the player takes on the role of stunt driving wrestler Toro Loco, and even a treasure hunt with totems that are definitely not cursed. Every section of the game is steeped in Mexican motoring history, another great example of the amount of research the dev team put into the game and the passion they have for the culture of the game's location. Now I talked about the drawbacks of the game's story last time, including how it carrying over from Forza Horizon 4 makes no sense to new players, and even how some of the story elements are just unrealistic. But to explore the other side of the coin, let's talk about the game's set pieces. The opening cinematic sees the player character flying into the Horizon Festival aboard a cargo plane carrying four cars. Within the first minute of actual gameplay, you've parachuted out of the plane in a Ford Bronco, raced across the side of the volcano before leaping into the abyss off the side of the volcano. Yes, it's unrealistic. Yes, it's wacky. And yes, it wasn't necessary to have whatsoever. But tell me it isn't freaking cool. The fact the road ends, the car shoots over the edge, the glorious slow motion, it all comes together into a spine tingling moment that really sets the scene for the story to come. Once the Bronco drive is out of the way, the action then switches to a Corvette Stingray battling through an impenetrable dust storm. This scene serves to introduce the player to the dynamic weather of the game, and although this storm is scripted, how the elements can affect each race differently. Once the storm has been weathered, the action flicks to the jungle and a Porsche 911 Desert Flyer, sliding through the muddy terrain with another gratifying slow-mo jump into the river. Finally, we have the cherry on top. 
The player character speeds out of the plane in a Mercedes AMG 1, rocketing along the coastal roads and desert highways before culminating in a race down the Horizon Festival runway against the plane and a plethora of other vehicles. All this whilst the festival announcer hypes up the crowd with the announcement that the star guest has arrived in Mexico. This opening sequence is enough to get even the slowest of pulses racing and can really only be described as epic. What follows is a story containing high octane races, including a rematch against the plane, heart stopping stunts, storm chasing and even academic research. At least that's the excuse we were given to shoot along a highway narrowly missing oncoming cars. Forza Horizon 5's story isn't really meant to make any sense. It's just a collection of adrenaline fueled set pieces designed to provide maximum enjoyment and in our book it definitely delivers. <laughs> As for the racing, there are five classes of racing, these being road, street, drag, dirt and cross country. These are split across the game's total of 88 races, with each having their own vehicle customization options, rank requirements and specific driving styles needed. As it turns out, it's not just a case of hopping behind the wheel of a bespoke dirt racer and being able to conquer the race. Nope, you have to actually learn how to handle every race type to ensure you rise to the front of the grid. Personally, I prefer the road and street races, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to see a cross country race pop up every now and then. Beside the races, there are also stunt jumps, speed traps, drifting courses and even treasure hunts to complete, so if you don't fancy a race, there's still plenty to keep you occupied. Oh, there are also the trailblazers too, an off-road point-to-point -point race against the clock that sees you tearing through the countryside at breakneck speeds, trying to beat the target time. For those who wish to really test themselves, each race series has a finale event designed to test everything you've learned throughout that series. The Titan wraps up the cross country series with a gruelling 16.6 mile race, starting up in the mountains before a trek across the map before ending with a heart stopping stunt jump to the finish line. The street racing scene culminates in the 18 mile marathon, finishing on the spectacular La Gran Puente Bridge. The road racing series ends with a 34.3 mile long Colossus, taking the scenic route from the east to west coast of the map. Next up is the 36.5 mile long Gauntlet, the finale of the dirt racing series. This race sees you take on a 50% dirt, 50% road race from the east to the west via the Horizon Stadium and Volcano, ensuring you take in all the sights. Finally, we have the Goliath. Although not the longest, at a staggering 34 miles, the Goliath takes over 10 minutes to complete, taking races on a tour of the entire Forza Horizon 5 map. This race is epic, a true test of your racecraft and the finale of the Horizon main stage, basically making it the final race of the game. All five finales alone would be a game worth playing, so to have them as just a small part of an overall huge game is a real treat. The Trailblazers also have their own finale, with the Juggernaut ending with the amazing stunt jump over Ekbalam, another event that gives you the chills. These races are incredibly fun to play solo, but racing with friends takes things to a whole new level. If your rival takes the lead into turn one, don't worry, you still have roughly eight minutes or so to catch them before the end of the race. Like I said, these events really are the true test of racing. Any mistake can be incredibly punishing, and there are even speedrun tables established for each of the races. Feel free to post your best times in the comments below, and maybe we'll try to beat them. So we've covered pretty much all of the bases in this video, but now let's talk about traversing the map quickly. The fast travel system in the game is well implemented. Once you've smashed a fast travel board, you can journey back to that location almost instantly for a fee. The price is pretty high to begin with, but does reduce by 200 credits with each board smashed. Plus it is a driving game, so it does make sense to force you into your car rather than a loading screen. You do need to have bought the Buenas Vistas house before you can start fast traveling and this house does cost 2 million credits to buy, but once you have the keys, you can venture across the map at a moment's notice. Speaking of houses, there are 7 in total across the map, with each acting like a mini festival site. From your house, you can access your garage, customise your car setups or livery designs, head to the auto show or auction house, oh, and of course, customise the player character. Some lucky players may have been given a house for free when they start their Horizon adventure. And to those players, I can only say, you lucky sods. Yeah. 
going back to character customization for a moment, there's a fair amount to cover here, including the usual endless list of clothing items, emotes, and dances you can assign to your character. The main headline though is the level of representation present in the game, starting with pronouns. In Forza Horizon 5, players have the choice to make their character gender neutral, which may seem like a small thing to many, but is a huge breath of fresh air for those individuals seeking a character they can relate to. This also carries over into your character's appearance. For the first time in the series, players can choose to have their character fitted with prosthetic limbs. Again, this may seem small to those unaffected, but this is a landmark moment for the series, and it's so encouraging to see Forza Horizon joining the other games promoting the acceptance of prosthesis and body diversity. Then there's the cultural representation in the game. Sure, we still see the Assassin's Creed method of characters slipping in and out of their native language in the middle of a sentence, but it's still refreshing to see Spanish being used in the dialogue, and for the Spanish-speaking characters to be voiced by Spanish-speaking actors. Racial diversity is also present in the game, with players having a vast range of skin tones to choose from when creating their character. Again, this may seem a small detail to many, but to those underrepresented, this is a very big deal. There's still work to be done when it comes to hairstyles and other aesthetics, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. Alright, let's wrap this video up with the best of the rest. When creating your player character, you can assign a name to be referred to in-game. At the time of setting up my character, I figured this would only appear in menu screens and subtitles, so imagine my surprise the first time I rebooted the game to hear Anna, the game's AI companion, say, Welcome back, Mark. The number of names this works with is sadly fairly limited, but for those whose name is on the list, this is a really neat bit of sound design. On the topic of sound design, the game's soundtrack is outstanding, with a streamer mode for us content creators meaning we can still listen to the radio without the shadow of DMCA hovering over us. The car sounds are almost perfect, with a few little issues here and there. Beyond those issues though, the best part of driving in Forza Horizon 5 is listening to the roar of the engine, especially when it echoes through the tunnels dotted around the map. Also, nothing beats the sound of a turbocharger mid-gear change, and I will die on that hill if I have to. We here at Racing Games know Forza Horizon 5 isn't perfect. There's still a long way to go to fix the various issues we raised in our last video. But when you weigh up the pros and cons, they do almost balance each other out nicely. Let us know in the comments below your favourite parts of Forza Horizon 5. Be sure to join in on the conversation. And for those who haven't checked out our Everything Wrong With Forza Horizon 5 video, the link is in the description below. For now though, thanks for watching. I've been Mark from Racing Games. Please like and subscribe for all things Forza Horizon 5. And now I'm off to take on the Goliath once more.